Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith, and of course this is my uh, sidekick uh, Shackleton. A review paper came out recently that talks all about tipping points in the climate system. It calls them tipping points if they occur within a decade or two once they're triggered, and it calls them tipping elements if they're more longer term like if it takes much longer than a few decades for them to roll over. And it discusses, uh, it tries to categorize them in terms of low impacts, high impacts, and uh, the time scale for the impacts to be manifested. So I'll show you uh, one of the key um, plots or the key diagrams in this paper. So we have uh, high impacts up here and low impacts down here. And we have millennia, time scales for impacts to manifest, thousands of years, centuries, decades. So things like coral reefs, mortality, you know, it's happening now. Um, and, uh, you know, we could lose most of the reefs in the next few decades. Arctic sea ice is here, the Amazon dieback. Boreal forests, so dying of boreal forests and replacement of the boreal forests with deciduous forests, boreal forests uh, moving northward, so it's getting too warm at the low southerly extents of the boreal forests, and they're expanding northward. Uh, at the northern extent, they're actually overriding some of the um, some of the areas that were tundra and shrublands permafrost thaw, uh, thawing um, and of course there's methane hydrates is a separate issue here. The Atlantic meridional overturning circulation slowdown, ocean current slowdown, ice sheet melt. So this is the ice sheets on mostly on Greenland and Antarctica and up here we have a fairly new one that people don't know too much about and that's the idea of cloud deck evaporation. So vast clouds that cover the um, oceans for example if it becomes too warm the mechanisms that maintain these clouds could no longer be there and these clouds can dissipate and then we'd have a huge warming very quickly as more sunlight was able to reach the surface of the earth so i'm going to discuss all of these sort of tipping points um, from this uh, paper uh, so this is the this is the paper here. Um, it's called ESD Reviews. This is the Earth System Dynamics. So it's a review paper and it looks at the mechanisms, the evidence and the impacts of climate tipping elements. And it's, it, um, the paper came out April 21st, 2020. So it's fresh off the presses. Okay, but before I go into the details of that, this is my website, um, paulbeckwith.net. Please check it out. Um, this is the last posting on how the climate niche is shifting away from where we most, where most of us live. And since this, since I did these videos and discussed this paper, there's a a new paper has just come out on how many parts of the world are actually reaching that uh, critical. Uh, situation of temperature and humidity where people can't uh, survive outside. So I'll discuss that in a future video. This is my uh, Twitter at Paul H. Beckwith, so please check it out if you haven't. And uh, this is a tweet that I just sent out several hours ago. And basically, so here we are. We're right here. We're, this is a Venn diagram. There's all of these different movies, Orson Welles, 1984, Margaret Atwood, A Handmaid's Tale, short the book, The Matrix, Brazil, Logan's Run, Lord of the Flies, <laughs> Animal Farm, Fahrenheit 451, Clockwork Orange, Soylent Green, Gattaca, Brave New World, and you can think of other ones, but we're, we're in the center here within a mishmash of all of these different things. So if you're on Twitter, please go you know, and give it a retweet and let's see how high we can get the, uh, you know, this, this uh, image going out. 
see how many people we can get it out to. And of course, my Facebook uh, feed. Um, you know, I also have a couple Facebook uh, a page and a site. So, so please, uh, you know, follow me. You know, join, check me out. Um, people say I need to do more on Instagram, more on Reddit. So I'm working actually towards that. I also do some stuff on LinkedIn. So please find me on all those forums and, uh, you know, help me get the climate message out there. Okay, so when I talk about tipping elements in the Earth's climate system, this is a classic uh, paper, the Timothy Lenton et al. paper. came out um, in 2007, so it's been out there a while. And there's a couple key things where it looked at. So this was a um, map of potential policy-relevant tipping elements in the climate system. So it includes the instability of the West Antarctic ice sheet, changes in Antarctic bottom water formation, so the water can then undercut the ice sheets, causing melting, melting of the Greenland ice sheet, Arctic sea ice loss, which is very much in our face, you know, very, very urgently, uh, very likely to have a blue ocean event soon. And then we have the permafrost and tundra loss, boreal forest dieback, a climate change induced ozone hole in the Northern hemisphere. We've already seen this occur. Um, Atlantic deep water formation. So this is the AMOC uh, slowing down, even shutting off. Boreal forest dieback here as well. So in North, Northern Canada, as well as in Northern Asia. Um, change in ENSO amplitude or frequency. We're also seeing, we seem to be seeing more frequent and more powerful El Ninos. The dieback of the Amazon rainforest, greening of the Sahara, changes in the monsoons in West Africa and also in India. Okay, so these are all tipping elements and you can assess um, the risk of these happening. So this is an excellent table. Again, you know, just Google the title of this paper. Just Google the title, Tipping Elements in the Earth Climate System, you know, and uh, this is a this is a key uh, chart. So we've got all these different tipping elements listed, um, which I've mentioned from the map. There's the, uh, you know, features of the system that change, different parameters that are important, the critical values of temperature or rainfall or what, or, or uh, you know, that are required to have the, ele the element tip, the global warming levels at which we expect these things to occur, the transition time scale, once it starts, how long it takes to, to tip, and the key impacts. Now, of course, we have to remember that these are all connected within the climate system so that we can get cascading effects. So in other words, if you know, if we lose the Arctic sea ice, or when we do, then Greenland is exposed. So Greenland can, mass loss can greatly increase. That will raise sea level. That can destabilize the West um, Antarctic ice sheet, and even the East Antarctic ice sheet in the Southern Hemisphere can change the, the, the bottom water, um, the, the, the bottom water currents, etc. You know, it causes the tundra to warm up and uh, for trees to move north. So it's, there's all these cascading interconnected uh, feedbacks and, and tipping points. So this is a classic paper. Just wanted to remind you of it. Now, the, now there's a group called the Breakthrough Institute. Um, and they're located, they're a research, environmental research center in Oakland, California. And they have an idea, you know, they look for technological, they promote technological solutions to environmental problems. And they came up with this paper here. A couple of people from the Breakthrough Institute came up with this paper. So Earth System Dynamics Reviews on the Mechanisms, Evidence, and Impacts of Climate Tipping Elements. So again, this is open source, so please have a look at it. Now, the key points here, the tipping elements that they look at in this paper are similar to the ones in the Lenten 2007 paper, but they don't cover everything. They cover a lot of the different things, okay? And I'm gonna discuss the diagrams, mostly the diagrams in this paper, 
to give you a gist of, of what it's talking about. Okay, so let's go up to the beginning of the diagrams. Okay, so here we are. Okay, so the first thing is the AMOC, the Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation Weakening and Collapse. So weakening is a tipping element. Can, you know, weakens over a long period of time, and then the actual collapse of it, where it would stop flowing or would reconfigure at lower latitudes, would be a tipping point. And on human time scales, it's essentially irreversible once it happens. Okay, so here's a plot showing the AMOC. The, this is the, 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 the strength of the ocean currents. Um, this is times 10 to the 6 cubic meters per second, the unit of one sverdrup. S-V-E-R-D-R-U-P is 10 to the 6 meters cubed per second. So this is almost 20 sverdrops here. Um, this is from 1850 to 2000-ish. And in the low emission scenario, we, this is what the modeling shows it to do with the uncertainty, 66% and 100% uh, of the cases, um, the statistics. And this is the high emission scenario, so a sharper drop off, but still not yet a complete collapse according to the modeling. Um, and if we take a, a, this is a percentage basis uh, with the baseline of 2006 to 2015, then this is what the plot looks like. Okay, um, under the low emission RCP representative concentration pathway 2.6 scenario, the low emission. IPCC scenario, and this is what we expect on, under the higher emission scenario. So a drop of, you know, maybe 40% or so down to 60% of, of full uh, capacity by 2100. Again, take these, you know, this is only from the modeling, okay? Um, in terms of the uh, methane hydrate destabilization, you know, as a tipping element that's irreversible, um, it's looked at here. So basically, the, these are all the methane sources um, from a couple, four different papers here. Not all of them um, talk about wetlands, but the, this one here does, the Kirsch 2013 paper, and the Sen Son Sonoy et al. 2016 paper. Um, so wetlands, this is the emission rate in megatons of methane per year. Remember that methane is a very powerful greenhouse gas with a global warming potential compared to CO2 of 34 over a 100-year time scale and 86 over a 20-year time scale. Um, so, you know, wetlands, 177 to 284 megatons of methane per year and a slightly lower range here um, in this other paper. Uh, agriculture, so this is an anthropogenic one, of course, on the ballpark of 200 or 115 to 243. Fossil fuel burning, close to 100. Okay, uh, so there's a wide range. So the key thing is different papers, you know, wide range. We're trying to pin down these numbers, but there's still a lot of uncertainty. Geological emissions of, of methane. Um, around uh, 50, 50 odd level, um, very tiny here. So there's like, again, huge range. Um, fresh water, so methane from marshes and wetland. This is uh, marine, I guess, and then fresh water uh, sources. And then there's biomass burning, wild animals. Um, so think of livestock, etc. They're not really wild, they're domesticated. I don't know if they fit under farming, under agriculture, they're probably under ar agriculture. So wild animals, termites here, a separate category because it's significant. Methane hydrates, they consider it extremely low. Wildfires also very low and permafrost very low. So these numbers, you know, this is just a, the, what, a review paper. I don't, doesn't mean that I agree with these numbers. Um, so I'm going to continue on in a second video. Thank you for listening. And uh, please make sure you check out my website, paulbeckwith.net, and consider making a donation to support this work. Thanks again.